All right, let's go get some new reeds. Look at all of these reeds. Oh my goodness. All of these reeds and not a single bassoon one. Sheesh. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to the channel. My name is Bassoon Dan. I'm a professional bassoon player. Today, we'll be talking about reeds. What are they? Where can you get them? How expensive are they? Why are they so expensive? And why do I hate them so much? Now, before we talk about reeds, I should explain to you that there are four main ways that you can play a wind instrument. Number one, we got whole, as in like a flute or a pan flute. Number two is a single reed. What I have in my hand here is a single reed, specifically a clarinet reed. This piece of cane, the single piece of cane that I'm holding right here, helps with creating sound by producing vibration. Now, if you try to play on it by itself, not much, right? So, with single reeds, they need to be attached to a mouthpiece. Ta-da! And once aligned with the mouthpiece, they need to have something to connect it to, aka the ligature. Once that is all tightened up and ready to go, you can blow into it and produce sound. How this works is that the piece of cane vibrates super fast. Like that, right? And so with that vibration, it vibrates off of this mouthpiece and creates sound. Gross. Now, the thing about reeds in general, right, is that they're made of cane, aka a plant. They don't last very long. They tend to age. And also, since they're made of cane, they are also very fragile. See? All right. Number three, we got brass mouthpiece. What I have right now is a trombone mouthpiece. All brass mouthpieces are pretty similar as in they have a pretty similar shape. They're all cup shaped. They're made of metal. They're a lot more durable. They last much longer. No damage. The brass mouthpiece, you create the vibrations using both of your lips. You put that into a brass mouthpiece. And that's how sound is produced on a brass instrument. Now then, let's talk about the double reed, such as the oboe and the bassoon. Now, with double reeds, they are exactly what they sound like. You take a single reed, you take another one of those, and then you slap them together, some extra steps happen in between, and boom, you got a double reed. Now, a double reed creates a very unique sound. Single reeds usually vibrate off a mouthpiece, right? But with a double reed, it vibrates against itself and vibrates like that. It's also really unique for the fact that it needs to be soaked in a cup of water. Yes, this is just water. It's not special reed water or anything. It's just water. You take that out and... Ta-da! Now with the mouthpiece and box of single reeds, you can easily get this at any music store. Heck, you can even get this at Guitar Center. However, with double reeds, that presents a different problem. And that's the topic of today's video. I'm going to be talking about all the different ways you can obtain reeds. I'll be testing them and giving them a scale rating of 1 to 10. 10 being perfect reed, 1 being absolute trash. I will also see if I am able to fix it with the tools I have on hand. Let's get into it! Ooh, yeah. So. You just joined band, your band director goes, Ah, you're a pretty smart kid. I really like you. They bestow the honor of bassoon player upon you. Now, they only pick the smartest, brightest, and most responsible kids on the bassoon. Usually. After they give you your school owned bassoon, they also give you your very first read. There is a 99% chance that your band director is not a read maker. So, they get whatever is convenient for them, aka music store. What I have right now is a store-bought reed. I got this from a local music store for about 13 bucks. At the very bottom of the reed, right where the collar is, you can see a stamp that says M.S.O, meaning medium soft. Let's take a look. This is my first time looking at this reed. Uh, for legal reasons, I'm going to be leaving off the companies of all these reed companies for now. Let's take a look here. <sighs> wow. Oh man, this reed is so open. Let's compare it to another reed. So, this one is a reed I made. Super tiny. Super 
big, yes? Now I bring this up as a main problem because when the aperture, aka the opening of the reed is this open, there's too much space for the reed to vibrate back and forth. So if you try to blow on it, no sound will come out. That's an easy fix. Right now, I'm not gonna do anything to this reed. I'm just gonna soak it, I'm gonna play on it, and I'll give you some first impressions. Alrighty, good news, I got sound out of it. Bad news, it's so flat, it's registering as like maybe a B natural. For beginners, this could be very discouraging. Oh, first time I've ever played, it's so flat that I can't get the right sound. Right now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my pliers, close it up. All right, it's easier to play on. Okay, right off the bat, the E's and F's are very flat. Usually for bassoon reeds, if these notes are flat, it tells me that the reed is a little too long. Let's measure it. Wow. According to my ruler, this thing is about 29 and a half millimeters. It's a little long. Let's cut it. <laughs> we fixed the pitch issue. We close the reed, we cut the tip. Now, when you cut the tip like that, it also makes our new tip a little denser. I'm going in. <clears throat> Wish me luck. Alrighty. Let's see how this works. Oh. Good news. It kind of works. It's still a little bit firm. I would need to do more work to this read off camera, but pretty doable. The next read we're going to be looking at is this one, this next door bought read. Now this one is purple. This company also makes another reed that is red. Uh, overall pretty good. The purple one's a little bit more open. We're gonna take a look at this red one first. Oh, first off, it's very hard. It's so firm. Me, a professional, I'm having a hard time trying to put air into this thing. This is a reed that's marketed towards beginners. I'm gonna measure it. Let's see. Okay. Everything checks out. It's a little better. It's still pretty flat. I'm gonna have to take a look at this. It's more or less the same problems as the green reed. I think it's a little too long. It's a little too dense. This reed's a little too thick. I'm gonna put that aside. That one wasn't too bad. Purple one. It's in tune. More or less the same thing. This reed is thick with minimum two C's, maybe up to seven. Alrighty, let's try it out now. direction now however it's still pretty thick I'm gonna have to do that one off camera the reason why I'm doing all of this off camera is because I doubt y'all want to see me scrape on a reed for like 30 minutes straight lastly of the store-bought reeds I have this one right not as common as the other reeds but still pretty important we're gonna call this one the multicolored one now I'm not gonna lie to y'all it is a little rough so let's take a look here it's hard to see with my phone if it decides to focus come on there's a lot of unevenness between the two blades here. So ideally, we'd want both the blades to be pretty much the same, like an oval, right? Right now, it's a little bit lopsided, but you know, I've seen worse. In terms of scraping, there's a lot of nicks, right, throughout. But you know, don't judge a reed by its cover. Alrighty, let's take a look. My guess, more or less the same as before. I think this one might be the shortest one. So far, it is definitely the softest read so far, so I'm not feeling good about this. Oh, oh, man. It's a 
little hard to see on camera, but this reed is pretty soft compared to the rest. Now, there are pros and cons about soft cane versus hard cane, right? Soft cane is a little bit or a lot easier to play softer dynamics and really soft high notes. However, tendency to be sharp throughout most of the bassoon overall does not feel good on the face. At least for me, it doesn't feel good. Where does that leave us? I'm going to give that a rating of 6 out of 10. I don't hate these reeds. I know my reaction is whatever, right? Oh, oh, I don't hate these reeds. I think they're a very convenient way to get reeds whenever you don't have a reed maker available. Having said that, this is like if you bought a two-piece suit at H&M. Could you get away with it? Yeah, sure. You can wear it to a wedding. You'll get by with it. It'll look nice. It'll do the job just fine, right? Chances are you're probably going to need the suit tailored. The sleeves might be a little too long. The pants might need to be hemmed. You could get away with not doing any of that and looking pretty decent. However, for you to get the most out of that suit, you would need to go to a tailor to get them fixed for you so that you are looking your absolute best. These reeds aren't bad, they just need some TLC from an experienced reed maker. That's pretty much it. I think they're pretty okay when you first start. As you become more experienced on the bassoon, I think we should start moving away from these reeds. Pros, pretty easy to get, pretty cheap. Cons, uh, they need a lot of TLC for it to be decent or usable or in tune. Ooh, yeah. So now your band director is telling you, Hey, you probably need more than one good reed. You need at least maybe three. You tell your parents, Hey mom, hey dad, I need a new reed. Okay, cool, how much are they? For one bassoon reed, it's about 15 to 25 dollars per reed. <gasps> Most parents are like, yeah sure, I'll support my child's hobby even though it's a little bit expensive. However, there's always that one, right? One percent of y'all, the mom, you know, with the Karen mom, you know, with the, the, the hair and the, and the god complex, right? They're gonna come up and go, Okay, maybe you're right. Maybe reeds are too expensive and you can probably find cheaper alternatives. You go on Google and you go bassoon reeds for cheap, right? And then you find an Amazon listing and you can get five for the price of one. Aha, uh -huh. I told you, you try to scam me, I can get five for the same amount for one. How dare you? My husband's an ex-Navy SEAL. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna be trying them out. M -m 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 money shot. Oh, Jesus. All right. Um, I don't know why there's a plastic film over it, but sure. Oh my goodness. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Okay. Hold up, y'all gotta see this. You know how with the other reeds, I've been complaining about how they're too open, right? So, normal reed opening, yes? Look at the state of this reed opening. There is no opening, look at this thing. <laughs> it almost looks like a single reed, look at this. All right, so, let's take a look at the side profile. There's almost none. Wow, look at the state of this thing. And then we flip it. Oh. Oh my goodness. All right, a couple things to point out here. You see that it looks like it has veins. Like, look, it looks like it's dehydrated. Like, look at that. You can see the gradations and all of the nicks and everything from this reed. I don't I don't even want to play on this. Like, this is Oh man, this is rough. Oh my goodness. It has veins. <laughs> what kind of reed has veins? Look at this thing. When a reed is this closed, Obviously, you won't be able to get air in, so I'm going to assume it's not even going to vibrate. At least they come in nice capsules. I can use that for something. All right, I guess I should try it. Okay, it vibrates. All right, well, let's give her a go. Okay. Oh, man, this reed smells. Ugh. I can't! I can't do it! I can't do it! That's gross. I can't do it. 
Oh, brother. This is the veiny reed. I already know it's not gonna play. I'm just not even gonna. It smells awful. It's like somebody threw up in it. Anyway, pros and cons. Uh, pro, you can get them online. Super cheap. Cons, literally unplayable. Smells really bad. Uh, give it a rating of two out of 10. Not the worst thing I've played on, sadly, but it's pretty awful. Would not recommend. Absolute trash. Ooh, yeah. Handmade reeds. For most people that are in band or teach band, getting handmade reeds from a professional is number one. However, it's also the hardest way to get reeds. Let me explain. There aren't a lot of professional bassoon players. Besides being really hard to find, they're also really expensive. Dare I say $25 to maybe even $35, maybe even more for one reed. Being a professional bassoonist myself and also making my own reeds, I kind of have to side with the price in here. A lot of the pricing of these professionally handmade reeds is due to time and labor. I don't have enough time in this video to explain how to make reeds. That's going to be its own video. Hint, hint, wink, wink. I'm going to summarize it as best as I can. <clears throat> Split, gouge, shape, profile, soak, fold, cut, fold, wire, wrap, pin, sit, unwrap, cut, bevel, wire, 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 seam, ream, soak, cut, razor, scrape, 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 play. Scrape, 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 play. Scrape, 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 play. And decorate. All of this for just one read. This is a lot to do. Now, even with all the things I just described, there's no guarantee that every single one of these reads will work. If you're lucky enough, maybe half of those reads will end up being good. Another reason of the high price marker is that you do get the professional guarantee. AKA, if you don't like this read, I will take this read. Like I said before, I do make my own reads and I do sell my own reads to my own students. Here they are. Now, I don't need to play on them. I don't even need to give it a rating. I already know it's a 10 out of 10 because I made it. Anyway, so instead of play testing, doing the whole thing, I'm gonna tell y'all how you can probably find some professional reads. If you live in a major city with a major orchestra, chances are the bassoon players in there make their own reads. If you really want good reads, see if you can reach out to them, see if they sell reads, or you can, you know, maybe bribe them with a couple extra bucks and go, hey, I need some good reads. If your local city's professional orchestra players are too busy to make reads, then you can try your local music school. Usually by the time bassoon players are in college, they're kind of expected to make their own reads. Or you can maybe ask some local freelancing bassoonists. I have the benefit of being in a larger metropolitan city. Finding bassoon players is pretty easy for me, but see if you can get them to ship the reads to you. I'll have more resources down in the description, but it's not as hard as it seems. It might take a little bit of extra, you know, elbow grease, but it's doable. It's 2023. You have the power of the internet at your fingertips. I've been playing since before the internet. Do you know some of the shady things I've had to do to get reads? Pros, it will play very well. It'll last pretty long. Cons, expensive, hard to find. That's it. Ooh, yeah. I have to address this because it exists. There's a company out there that specializes in flavored reeds. I actually have three of them. One is, I want to say strawberry. Yep. The other one is pina colada and blue raspberry. In addition to trying them, I'm also going to give them a taste test to see if they actually taste like what is described. Before I play on it, just know that this is a terrible idea. And I'm going to explain why. As a wind player, Everything we eat or drink or ingest in our bodies ends up in our instrument or reed at some point. It doesn't matter how well you rinse out your mouth or, you know, go on a fast or whatever. You're going to end up getting something in there. Now with these, not only is there some kind of artificial coloring that could stain the inside of your bassoon, it could also cause some serious damage. Now, I did some research on this website and they do say that there is a small amount of sugar, 
that's in the reed to make it flavored. I highly doubt they use some kind of artificial sweetener, but even then, I still wouldn't put this in my horn. Here we are. This is the blue raspberry one. It's MS, meaning medium soft. Something that surprised me is that I thought this was just like a, like a spray paint coating kind of thing, right? But it's also on the inside of the reed as well. I don't know how they did it. I'm going to play on this and see what happens. I'm going to risk it all for YouTube. I'm going to play on this flavored reed into my bassoon. My very expensive heckle bassoon. Don't say I've never done anything. To be safe, I'm going to use a crappy vocal. Oh my goodness. So I moved my reed out of the water and it turned blue. Oh no, okay. I haven't even done anything to it. Let's have a taste test. Oh, that's disgusting. Okay, it plays. It's it's not even it's more like listerine than it is blueberry or blue raspberry. Here goes nothing. All right, nope, crap, one out of ten. Oh, that's disgusting. Honestly, that's just as bad as those Amazon reads. Oh my goodness, and I don't know if y'all can see this, but my pans are blue now. They're stained. Red read. Let's try this one out. All right, so this is supposed to be strawberry. Doesn't smell like it. Well, doesn't taste good. My fingers are still blue. Oh, okay. I'm done. I'm done with these. Absolute trash. Would not recommend. This is a company called Flavor Reads. Do not buy from them. I cannot recommend this at all. This read absolutely sucks. Do not get this read. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The company is out of business. Ooh, yeah. I have to make this its own section. I've had so many students come up to me and ask, Excuse me, sir. Something's wrong with my read. I can't get it to play. Can you take a look at it? And then I take a look at it and it's literally rotting. Let me make one thing clear to you. If I ever see one of these reads, I'm gonna sit you down. I'm going to carefully grab that read and I'm gonna gone. Like, I'm not talking low orbit. I'm talking deep space gone. It's flying through the cosmos at near light speed. If I get lucky enough and my aim is good, it's gonna bounce off the Voyager 1. But sir, it plays so good, I can't throw this away. Or whatever other excuse you have for it. But I made my middle school's top band with this read. I made my high school's top orchestra with this read. But I made, I made all region band on this read. I can't throw it away. All right, look, I'm gonna make one thing very clear to you. Your band director's not gonna say it, your private lesson teacher's probably not gonna say it, but I'm gonna say this. Respectfully, we don't care. What you're doing to this read when you're playing on it for this long is the exact plot to Weekend at Bernie's. You're trying to make this corpse seem like a living being, but you know that read is dead. Everything you eat or drink ends up in this read at one point. So whatever school lunches or snacks or whatever, you know, drinks, soda, whatever, ends up in that read. They don't last forever. It's not like a brass mouthpiece. It will rot because it's a plant. It is a dead plant that you are playing on. The more you play on it, the older it gets. There is a life cycle to all reads. Birth, playing, death. That's it. Now, how long do they usually last? If you take good care of it and you rotate them around, realistically, maybe three months. I'm so tired of having to deal with- I haven't bought a read since last year. Now, how do you know if your read is dead? If it's green, if it's black, if it starts to smell, it's probably not good. It's not rocket science, right? What you're essentially playing on is a Petri dish of germs that go into your mouth. I'm a bassoon player. I'm not a rocket scientist. I'm not even a regular scientist. But it doesn't take much to know that something that looks like this shouldn't go in your mouth. 
We just got out of a pandemic. I'm trying to avoid another one. Now, to be fair, this is like extreme case. Oh, I've neglected my personal hygiene and I've played on the same read for over a year. So that's very extreme. Most of y'all probably won't end up being like that, but I do have to say something about it in order for y'all to get the message. All right, look, I'm human, okay? I'll be nice, have a little wake for it, you know, burial, cremation, whatever, then do so. I don't care, but I shouldn't have to see it again. It's gone, it's dead. Do not attach your feelings to these reads. They will let you down in the end. I make literally thousands, if not tens of thousands of reads in my career. If I had kept every single one of my reads, do you understand how my living situation would be? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Here are three quick and easy steps for you to take care of your reads. Number one, butt end of the read, blow as hard as you can. Wipe the spit on your pants. Done. Number two, put it in a reed case with proper ventilation. If your reed case does not have any proper ventilation, what will happen is all of the spit and condensation will not evaporate in time, causing it to mold quicker. Number three, most importantly, do not eat before you play. Obviously, you're gonna have to eat something before you do anything. I suggest you find some time, rinse out the mouth, brush your teeth, floss, do whatever. If you want your reads to last longer, you gotta take care of them. It's not hard. Ooh, yeah. Imagine this. You take a clarinet or a saxophone mouthpiece, you attach it to a vocal, and you're able to make the same sound. Ideally, this would work in concept, right? Because you still have some kind of read vibration happening that goes into the instrument. Now, if you tried to do this yourself, right, you would notice that the mouthpiece is a little too big. The only chance that it would work is if you had made your own single read mouthpiece for the bassoon. This, my friends, is the single read mouthpiece custom made for bassoon. It works pretty much exactly the same as the clarinet mouthpiece that you saw earlier. However, there are a lot more complicated instructions. Number one, in the instructions, it uses a number two piccolo clarinet reed in A flat. Now, I don't know about y'all, but it's almost impossible to find in stores. The best thing I could do was I found a soprano sax reed. Here comes the next problem. There is no ligature. Instead, I've been given tape. And I'm going to tape this reed to this mouthpiece and then I'm gonna try it on my bassoon and see what happens. My guess is that it's probably not gonna make a sound. And if somehow I make it work, it's not gonna be a great sound. Look at the state of this thing. <laughs> Oh man, this looks awful. All right, now before I try it, I'm gonna see if it actually makes a sound. Huh. Okay, so it makes a sound. That's kind of promising. I can't, oh, what is going on? Okay. Okay, well, it exceeded my expectations and actually made a sound. Pros and cons, uh, uh, it's unique, it looks cool. If you're really desperate for it, you can make it work with one of these reeds. I guess if you have absolutely no other way to get reeds, then sure, give this a shot if you want to. Cons, I had to order this from out of the country. I don't wanna say where, but it took a pretty long time to get here and it cost more than what a regular read would cost. So, is it worth getting? No, not really. I mean, I kinda got this cause it was kinda fun. On a scale of one to 10, I don't hate it, but it is pretty bad. I'm gonna give it a two out of 10. I can't recommend this to anyone. Maybe it'll work better with the number two 
piccolo clarinet reed in a flat i'll see if i can get one of those and try it again overall it's not the worst thing i've played on i don't know why you would need a mouthpiece to begin with just buy a normal reed Ooh, yeah. lastly i'm gonna talk to y'all about Synthetic reeds. We have the technology and we have the resources. Synthetic reeds are relatively new in the market. Now, a synthetic reed is basically made of plastic, essentially, instead of the normal cane. I know a lot of people really like them and I know a lot of people really don't like them. We're gonna try out some of these, see what happens. This is a normal reed, right? Here is a plastic reed. Now, Right off the bat, you can already tell it's much glossier than the other one. It's also a little bit darker. Maybe from a distance, you can get away with it, but this is just a simple plastic reed. Now, I've never actually played on this plastic reed before. Uh, do I need to soak it? You know what? Sure, why not? Let's soak it. Oh, oh, that's harsh. It's very firm. It almost wants to bite back at me. Let's try it out. Right off the bat, it's very flat. Now, if it was a normal reed, I could clip the tip, but since it's plastic, I'm not able to do anything. And this is the fatal flaw of synthetic reeds. I can't work on them, right? I can't just get my file or my knife and just scrape away at whatever. If I wanna adjust something, I would have to approach it a different way. I'm also not skilled or smart enough to know exactly what to do, so I'm kinda just stuck with this. I can't fix this. This is what it is, I'm gonna maybe clip it, but I I don't have a lot of confidence in this. Also, listen to this. That's plastic. With this read, I'm gonna give, I can't, it's literally unplayable. It's one, one out of 10. It's trash. It's maybe a step up from those Amazon reads, but not much. We have the Legere Synthetic read. I've been asked many times about my opinions on this read. I know a lot of people that actually prefer this over normal reads and I've seen a lot of people do really good things and get away with it with this read. I'm gonna test this and see what happens. Alright well it's a little better than the other one. It's flat. I can't do anything. I can't, none of these tools will matter. I'm done, one out of 10. It's trash. It's gonna upset y'all, I know it's a hot take, but this ain't it. Ooh, yeah. In conclusion, reeds suck. Why make this video if all I'm just gonna do is complain about reeds? Well, number one, I'm a double reed player. I can complain about reeds all I want. Number two, I've worked with enough students to know that there are a lot of options out there in the market and it can be rather overwhelming to decide on which reads to get, which reads to don't get. The real answer to what read should I get is a read that you can buy and have someone work on to make it sound good. That's the definition of a good read. Most of the reads I've tried today are honestly subpar. Now, I do have the privilege of making my own reads, but if I had to pick one, it would be one of the first ones I get, the music store ones. The red and the purple reads are Jones reads, and the green read is Emerald, and the multicolored one is Singin' Dog. All of these I do recommend, especially if you're a beginner. Not every read is made the same. You could get the same exact read at the same exact time from the same exact company, and none of that will be the same. No two reads are made the same. If you don't have the right read, especially at the beginning, it could severely hinder your progress going forward. Notice that every option I went through needed at least some type of work done. Playing the bassoon is a privilege, and you owe it to yourself to do the best that you can to get good reads. The the main takeaway is you need to find somebody who is fluent in reed making. With a good reed maker, you can make a cheap reed sound decent. Yes, I understand. Good quality reeds are high in price. But the satisfaction and enjoyment you get from being able to play the bassoon as intended is priceless. I hope this video helped you out on your bassoon journey. This is like the first actual educational video that I'm making. Uh, I plan on doing more if y'all are into it. 
If y'all want to see more content like this, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If y'all have any questions about reads specifically, go ahead and comment. Uh, I'll do my best to answer each one of them. If you're really tired of hearing me talk, I have videos of me actually playing the bassoon. If you want to hear me talk more, you can find out the origin of the F word on the bassoon right here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope y'all enjoy the rest of your day. And as always, keep practicing.